Yes. Um, music is, oh my god, I can't believe it. I forgot Janet Jackson. She's like my hero. I can't even, I'm thinking about like all the people. Sorry, Janet Jackson is probably <laughs> my number one. She's right after mom. Let me just reiterate I that. Janet Jackson, she's after your mom. I know, because I, I'm literally thinking in my head, oh my god, I have to say Brandy because I love her and I just met her. And then I'm like thinking about all this stuff going on with Janet Jackson in the world. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, I just, I love her regardless of anything. Regardless of her, if her song was literally like her sleeping, I would be like, it's Janet. Like, what do you, you know, you can love it or hate it, but once a Janet fan, you're always a Janet fan. Yeah. So that's kind of how I am. So Janet, Janet Jackson, Janet Jackson. I love Janet. So, uh, <laughs> but um, back to what was it? Uh, have you always been into music? Uh, yes, I have always been into music uh, ever since I was like a wee little uh, embryo. Um, I think. Music for me was the way that I could express and also connect with people, even being someone different as I grew up. Yeah. So it always made me relatable. Um, you know, when you like the same music as other people or you experience music with other people, you kind of come together. And it's like the one universal thing that brings people together. So um, I would just say that, yeah, music is it's like my life. It's so many people's lives. So what was your childhood like? My childhood was extremely uh, intricate. Um, my, my family was supportive of me um, to a degree. I was always the kid who was in the arts. I was in the church choir. I was uh, in plays and musical theater, like born and raised in the musical theater community. And so every time I like felt like I was you know, pressured or I was going to be affected by people like bullies or kids that didn't like me or understand me, I always removed myself from the situation. And I always was like, I like kind of became a little bit of a hermit and focused in on just like, you know, my passions, which were like taking dance classes. And like every day after school, I was always in rehearsal. So people would be like, you know, oh, you want to hang out or try to find me. And I was never available. I would literally not make myself available. So I'd be like studies in class, then rehearsals, and school rehearsals, school rehearsals. And I even drove two hours away for rehearsals for certain projects that I did, mm -hmm. and would drive back the same night to go to get up and go to school the next morning, and just off and on. So I had always been determined to really work on uh, work in the arts and work on music. So basically, dance. you being so busy, you really didn't have time for the building. Yeah, yeah, I kind of was like, I kind of like created this bubble and this kind of force field of, it's it's two things. I did that and I sheltered myself from those, uh, I guess those moments of being bullied. I just didn't, I was never in the wrong space. I was never in the wrong time in the wrong place. I was always conscious of like when and where to go places and do things. But then uh, I was always known as the person who was so talented and like people just looked at me as like, you're the kid who sings, you're the kid who does who dances, and like you're so good, and it was a way for people to like me. Whether or not they agreed with who I was or really embraced me, they found a reason to like think I was cool enough to be like, oh yeah, that's the kid that like sings, so, or like dances. And I'd just be like, hey, what's up? You know, yeah. so I just kind of, I kept going on about my business, um, and it just like stayed out of people's like drama. And you grew up in Georgia, right? Tell me about that. Growing up in the dirty, dirty South, Georgia was probably a great place for me to sort of figure out who I was. I'm, I'm actually really grateful for my experience in Georgia because I knew that I wanted to get out and, exp and spread my wings and, and expand my horizons. So starting there was a really good foundation and it was a nice way to like be, be family oriented and also have a reason to struggle and a reason to get out of what I was sort of raised in. Um, like I'd always known that I wanted to come to New York, but like being in Georgia, I kind of just like I sucked it up. Like that's kind of like my advice to any kid watching or anyone else who's out there in like a small town. You know, you have to just like hold on because at some point you will be able to like spread your wings and get out of the situation. And you kind of have to focus your energies on like what are those accesses or what are those roads you need to take. So when you have that ability, you can just like, the moment I knew I was graduating and I knew what school I was going to, I told my family, I was like, I'm going to New York. And they were like, okay, like you really want to go to, and I was like, I know that's where I'm supposed to be. Like it's not supposed to be here at Emory, 
or at Georgia State University or in, in Georgia. It's like I know that I have bigger plans and bigger ideas. So uh, I prepped, just prepped. I read, I researched. I was just like, in my seat, in my seat. So you, you went to college in New York? So yeah, I went to college here in New York. Oh, okay. yeah. So I was like right out of high school. <laughs> when you moved there, was it a lot of culture shock or was it easy to fit in? It's a breath of fresh air. Like I literally got all, uh, like my mom actually drove me. We like took a road trip and I like, packed all of my stuff in the car. We drove up here and, and we, when we got here, I had already been to New York once before. Uh, I did a dance trip with my dance studio and we kind of got a glimpse of like, what it was like. We took classes at Broadway Dance Center. We did like a whole intensive. So I was like already, I already understood like that's what I want. The city is my home and I'm craving that. So when we got here, it wasn't a culture shock for me. It was ex exciting and it was, it was like normal. I was like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And everyone is different. Everyone is, is creative, maybe not creative, but cool with creative people. And I mean, it's just like, it felt like it was a, you know, a melting pot of just what I didn't get when I was growing up in Georgia. So now let's talk about your music now. Your latest song, Cola. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I watched the video and I loved it. What is your favorite cola? Uh, the classic. The cola classic, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what was the inspiration behind the music video? So the inspiration for Cola was, Cola is a very big brand that we all know um, and a lot of people love. And I wanted to basically make myself the same product. I'm selling myself as Cola sells their, their drink. Mm -hmm. And that's represented with a lot of pop art, pop art um, and iconic visuals. And it's all about branding. And for me, I want it to be like, you know what? I'm like the Coca-Cola bottle. And I want people to want me. And I want to basically become the embody what that meant. So in pop music, I also feel like there's a a very heavy reference with, with Coca-Cola or Pepsi or Pop because it's something that's popular um, and it's like a drink that's associated with like a lot of the top pop artists like Britney and Pink. The underlying tone was about being sexy and suggestive but like sort of subdued because it's intoxicating and you kind of find your way into it. It's not just like hitting you over the head with like you know a lot of loud music and a lot of loud vocals. That's why it was very sort of just like in the cut it sneaks up on you and it's like everyone eventually kind of gets into it. They might not like it at first, but you hear it a couple of times, you put it on repeat and you'll be like, oh, come on. Yes. <laughs> so um, do you have any upcoming projects that you're working on and where can your viewers follow you? So I am working on this project with a company that's called I Am From, I'm From Driftwood TV. Uh, I did an interview for the Huffington Post about three months ago, three or four months ago. Uh, and it was about my story of uh, uh, going from Brittany Houston to the Mila Jam and kind of uh, just opening up about all of that. They tell stories of the LGBTQ community uh, and all the things that people go through that are different in the various spectrums of the experience. So they actually hired me to be one of their uh, talk show hosts for their new YouTube show. Thank you. It's um, coming out in the fall. It's uh, I'm from Driftwood. TV, you can just Google that or go to YouTube, I'm from driftwood.com. Uh, and uh, it's myself and another woman who's actually uh, an, a news anchor in Westchester. Uh, she's a journalist and she's absolutely amazing. Um, her name is Femi. And we're going to kind of do like a Kathy and Hoda back and forth mm -hmm. of uh, social issues that people are dealing with yeah. in the community. So we're going to address some really cool topics and some really uh, interesting viewpoints of, of like the LGBTQI experience. And then also with music, uh, I'm writing like more than ever. Nothing solidified just yet, everything is to be determined. Okay. But I may have a project coming very soon. Um, I've just been working on like re, I always reassess, I always like to rebrand a little bit, not too much, but just kind of, you know, find a different direction and not get too bored with the things that I do. Um, and I'm, I'm all over social media. Sometimes you'll see me hanging out and supporting my girlfriend over at Cox. Um, <laughs> I host a lot of nightlife events and parties here in New York City. 
And uh, the best way to follow me, to catch any of that, is to go to my Instagram. That's really where it's at. And that's at the Mila Jam, uh, a, at T-H-E-M-I-L-H-A-M. I'm the only one. And then you can also go to my website, which is themilajam.com. And on Facebook, it's just facebook.com slash themilajam. And yeah. That's it. Everyone follow her. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and oh wait, last thing I want to say. Go ahead. <laughs> so I've created this new hashtag and I'm trying to get it out there and it's called with everything going on in the world I just want to address like with a lot of the racial issues and a lot of the discrimination issues and everyone's kind of going through this like crazy like time of like oppression. I just want to say that we need to spread jam, not hate. <laughs> that is very important. I because love it. Jam is good and it's edible and it's so much better for you than hate. So hashtag spread jam, not hate.